In this video, I'll be showing how to connect the view intervalometer to the NMX uh, motion controller from Dynamic Perception via Bluetooth. So on the uh, view here, we'll go to Settings, Wireless Setup, and we'll make sure Bluetooth is enabled. I've already got that enabled, so now it says Disable Bluetooth. That means it is enabled, so if we click that, it'll be uh, disabled. And we also have the built-in access point uh, enabled, and that's what we're connecting to for uh, the setup. And so here's the NMX down here. And so since the view has uh, Bluetooth enabled, I'm just gonna plug this into power here. And in a little bit, we'll see the blue light come on here and we saw these lights flicker. So that shows that it is connected. And you see that here on the view as well. We've got a little Bluetooth symbol right at the top. I think that's kind of hard to see in the video here, but uh, that, uh, that means it's connected and Sometimes that can take about 30 seconds the first time just because the view isn't uh, continuously scanning for, for Bluetooth uh, to conserve battery. So uh, it happened right away this time, but sometimes you have to wait uh, a little bit, but it should never be too long. So now we're going to move over to the app and get the motion set up here for the first time. Oh, now that I'm here, I see I forgot to turn on the camera. So go back over here and switch switch the camera on all right now we have the uh, camera connected so that enables uh, access to the app and when we first connect to the NMX for the first time, uh, we'll see these buttons here to set up each axis because it doesn't know what's connected to it. The NMX is a, a controller and it can connect to a variety of motion hardware. Um, today I have it connected to the uh, Sapphire uh, motion head, uh, pan tilt, a nice lightweight small system uh, from Dynamic Perception. And um, I'm gonna check here. So we've got number two and three hooked up. So number two here, if we follow it along, is the pan. So going back to the app again, have it on the other side of the office. Uh, so uh, number motor two is the pan axis. So we're gonna click that. The motion hardware is the sapphire. The axis function is pan. And then move per click, that's just if we're not using the joystick, how much it uh, moves each time we push a move button, how many degrees. And we can change that to whatever we want, but I'm gonna leave it at five. And oh, as far as uh, reverse direction, uh, that just reverses which way it moves. We're gonna test it out first. So I'll turn on live view. Say pan this way, and that moves. So I press the right button, moves to the right. Press the left button moves to the left. So that is correct. Now uh, motor three. This one is uh, also the sapphire and this would be the tilt axis. And I don't know if we need to reverse this. We'll leave that at five degrees as well. So let's see if we press up. Oh no, that went down. So I'm going to reverse directions here and press up again. That's better. So now it's going the right way and we can use the joystick mode to move that around. So we can set it up using this. Sometimes it takes a second to get started, but you can see it move. And then, um, we can change these if you want also to use these. Sometimes I like to uh, set pan to 15 degrees and then I just move it uh, 15 degrees one click for each uh, hour that I want to run the time lapse if I want to move it at 15 degrees per hour but um, you can do whatever you want here or just set it to one degree for fine tuning after finding your general position with the uh, joystick mode. Next here we will go to uh, the intervalometer section and when we have a pan tilt head, uh, it does give us the option to do motion tracking. So 15 degrees per hour, we'll just do the pan at uh, 15 degrees per hour to follow the, the stars as they move through the night. Or um, if you wanna do a sunset to sunrise, this is really nice because if you have the sun in the frame uh, when it's going down, it'll probably be in the frame when it comes up because it'll uh, move around at the right rate. And um, can also 
uh, track the sun or the moon, and that will use both axes. That's especially nice uh, for a longer lens. Um, I use the sun tracking for the solar eclipse, and actually you could do sun or moon tracking for that since they're in the same place, but um, stuff you don't need that often, but uh, it's uh, pretty nice uh, when you do need it. So right here though, um, if we disable tracking, see once we have tracking on, then we can't add keyframes, but if we disable tracking, um, now we can program the motion with keyframes. So this first one is the setup one, and this is just uh, the under the, the desk scene, so it's not, uh, not anything special here, but we will um, reset the keyframe to start here, and we'll work from that. I'm gonna move it over to this side a little bit. There's not a lot to see here to, to do much with, but uh, get the idea anyway. Okay, there at least we have uh, more of a reference point. So we're going to call this our start position. So I'm going to close this frame and then add a keyframe. And by default, it's 10 minutes from the start, but we can change that in timing, say, in, uh, you know, in, in an hour and a half. We'll be here, or actually let's kind of follow this down more and find our see if we can find the NMX power supply. There we go. So you see that light up. Now, so that's our uh, second keyframe, and we can add more of those, just like that, or, or remove them. And if we go to this one now, um, we have the option to um, just reset it and use this position the motors are currently in for this keyframe, or move to keyframe. That means move to back where this keyframe was originally programmed to be. If we don't touch any of that, it'll keep uh, these in the same position, but um, we can do this to move back to that starting position. And then having moved back to the starting position, we can now uh, fine tune that again if we want. And coming back to this one now, we have the option to reset it again or move to where this keyframe is supposed to be. So there we go. And uh, we don't have to have the motors in the position at the first keyframe when we start. So if we just uh, start the time lapse. It's going to move to the first keyframe position and then start uh, um, start running. And I just saw I forgot I have it in uh, HDR mode, so it's going to do uh, brackets uh, uh, 3 here, but um, that'll be fine. So once they're done, then it'll download the uh, photo to show here's our start position. So moved successfully back to the start, and it'll, it'll slowly uh, start moving the motors and actually um, program this to go uh, longer than I, I should have, so I won't let the demo run through right now. It's going an hour and a half between those keyframe points, but if we stop this, uh, we can make uh, adjustments if we like, and I'm going to do a single turn off bracketing on that, and um, if I don't have to move to this keyframe to adjust the timing. I can just say we'll do a really short amount, so in just 3 minutes and 30 seconds from the start. So we're going to see it uh, move very quickly now between uh, each point, and actually I should have set a shorter interval too, but uh, I'll leave it for now. And So now we hear the, the motors moving between each one, since it's going to quickly go from uh, the first to the second keyframe here. So this is just a quick uh, overview. Uh, it's possible to set up more keyframes, also to add uh, focus, and uh, I'll have more videos showing more of that, but I wanted to start out just showing how to get it connected and uh, kind of the concept of how it gets set up and how you configure each axis. And if you need to reconfigure those axes, you can always click on the, um, the degrees, like five degrees uh, symbol for by the pan and tilt in between the other buttons to to change it.
if you have a stage R or something else or you need to set up uh, something different in the future. But um, it does remember whatever you did uh, last, so uh, when you plug in the or connect the NMX again, it will uh, it'll remember the access configurations. Now I also want to show uh, we've had this running for a few frames now, and uh, it's uh, moving a lot between each frame because we set it to be a short amount of time between uh, the starting keyframe and the first keyframe. And so uh, I'm going to stop this now and show that it does, uh, it will remember the uh, position. So even if we had, say, uh, refreshed it, like come back, reconnected, it's going to load in the motor positions from the NMX and remember that. So when we come back here, uh, we can see that we're not actually at that starting keyframe. But if we were to restart it, it will, we can press move to keyframe or um, if we even just uh, wanted to change something, like um, do a, a shorter interval here, and we start it again, it's going to move back to the, the start. It'll remember where that point was. So you don't have to worry about uh, messing that up if you stop it partway through and uh, restart it. So that's what we're seeing now. Is, uh, that, again, is our, our starting position. So that's all I have for now. I'm going to be working on rolling out a lot more documentation and videos for this, but I uh, wanted to get this out there as soon as possible. Uh, thanks for your patience with all of this, and uh, I'm excited to uh, get this all polished up and uh, uh, completed.